Hello, welcome back to Devon Monk's Works and Worlds. I'm so happy to have you here today. I am finally getting back to doing a little more work on our unicorn that we were knitting. Um, I've had a lot of things going on recently, last couple months or months or so, and I haven't gotten to um, this project for a while. I did knit a different project in the interim, a pair of um, fingerless gloves that were full length. They went all the way up to the, um, almost up to the shoulder. And so those took a little time. They were lace work, which isn't my, <laughs> isn't my forte. So they took me a little time to do. And plus I had some writing to do and other things going on in the, these summer months here. So when we last left off our um, unicorn, we were working on these short rows. Let me move the needle out of the way a little bit. Uh, so we were working on shaping this bulge out of the circle that we were knitting on each side. We're making this bulge here, this basically extra amount of stitches to get that shape. And um, when I was last on camera, I had knitted all of them to cr create this increase, actually kind of like this, and then it was time for me to pick them up and continue knitting it around. So I did that. I picked them up. This is German short, short rows, which I've never tried before, but I think they're really pretty great for not having a lot of holes in them because that's one of the problems with making short rows is the way that you do the stop and go back, stop and go back, creates little holes along the side. But this is a nice tight fabric, which is what you want for toys because we don't want the stuffing to show through. So anyways, I did knit through that and then I knit up decreasing a few more times so that I could get less, you know, so that I could get a smaller opening up here because this is where the unicorn's horn is going to be made. So um, at this point, <laughs> I did some crazy things. I took everything off the needles and then I used the needles to knit some um, sample feet. Uh, I was on the road, I was at a signing event, I didn't have a stitch holder, so I ended up tearing all of these these needles out, which also unraveled a bunch of the stitches because they got tangled up in my um, travel bag. So um, we've had a little bit of recreating um, our progress, but we're back here and all is well so far. So we're at the stage now with this small hole at the top that it's time to stuff the unicorn. If we go any further, we're not going to be able to get our stuffing in here. Uh, one of the things I have done is at this join, let me get it up here close where you can see it, I always tie a knot. I know a lot of knitters don't, but this is essentially right where our um, two colors change. And if you notice, this looks like a pretty smooth change. It looks like it's all one row. There's often in knitting a thing that's like a hop that happens when you switch colors because knitting rows stack on top of each other. So it looks more like a spiral than an actual circle. And there's a little trick for that, which I believe I showed you on camera, that's called jogless stripe or jogless stripe knitting. And it's essentially when you switch your color, you knit one row around. And then when you're on the second row, you the first stitch of the new color, you um, slip instead of knit. And it kind of pushes the stitch up to make the row feel like it's a straight row instead of a spiral row. So anyways, that's probably the only exciting thing that's going on there. But what I'm going to do, I don't have to, but I'm going to go ahead and trim this uh, knotted yarn just to have it trimmed. And then I'm going to real quick before I do anything else, make sure that I've got a good solid knot on the bottom of the toy, which it looks like I do, because this is the last we're going to see the inside of this toy. Um, if you watched any of my other knitting videos, you know that I always put a lucky penny at the bottom of my toy and usually a lucky penny that has something to do with the toy itself. So this is a, um, I don't know if our camera will pick it up. Will you pick it up camera? It's kind of hard. It's shiny and weird. I don't know. Let me hold, try to hold real still. Huh? Kind of. Okay, so this is a 2018 penny. Why is this a lucky penny that's going in the toy? Well, that's because I first started, came up with the idea for the Dime a Demon book that has the little pink unicorn in it in 2018. So yes, this is a part of my writing world. I like to knit toys that fit in with my books and this little unicorn uh, is in 
book five of the Ordinary Magic series. The book is called Dime a Demon. And in it, this little um, sassy unicorn shows up. I think she's funny. Um, and so I thought it would be fun to, to knit a unicorn, which I could give away. So stay tuned. I'll let you know how you can possibly win this unicorn too, as you have seen hand knitted by me. Okay, this is uh, glass beads tied in some tulle. I did that on a previous video also. And I did size it back then to see if it would actually fit in the toy and it did. But what I'm going to do first before I try to shove this in here in this smaller hole is I'm gonna put a little bit of um, batting in the bottom. This is just polyfill or fiber fill. Uh, some people use yarn uh, scraps as their stuffing. Other people use cotton. This is polyester. Um, why am I using polyester? Well, the idea of this, I could use cotton too. This is what I have on hand. And the idea of this toy is that it will be a doorstop or something that can hold maybe a book holder, hold up a side of a bookshelf. Well, not the whole bookshelf, but some books. Um, so I want it to be heavy and I want it to be durable. And um, so I don't know, it, you know, plastic seems pretty durable. Okay, so here's our here's our glass. And it's heavy, people. This weighs a little something. Um, I'm gonna put this in here to <laughs> maybe if I can make it shove in. What we have is a um, you know almost a ball down here, not quite. A little little dippy there, not quite round. And I want this unicorn to be nice and roundy. The whole idea of this pattern, which again I'm modifying the oh Norman the Dorman gnome pattern. Actually, I can't remember who the designer is off the cuff here, but I will try to put a link to it in the patterns. This unicorn has not been made before. I'm um, making it up as I go, as is perhaps obvious, um, but sometimes that's the funnest part of knitting is sort of exploring where you can take a project and changing it when it isn't quite what you're hoping for and making it into something that turns into an item that you can love. Okay, so how are we doing? We're a little lumpy, I'm not super happy. So I'm using my fingers to stuff stuffing down around the glass beads because they're um, hard on the hand. They're not hard on the hands, but you know, they're glass beads. And I want this to feel soft and squishy. So even though it weighs a little bit, that it's still something that's soft to touch. Um, as I said in a previous video, the glass beads are all tied in a um, netting together because when I have put them in individually, just like poured some at the bottom of a knit item, they eventually get moved around and jiggled so that they kind of distribute themselves through the fluff and then you don't um, have as much weight at the bottom. And it's difficult when you don't have a hole in your toy to manipulate the fluffing. So you kind of want to get your fluffing where you want it on the first go before you um, finish knitting your project. So is this is kind of an interesting, tricky, ugly part of a toy project. I've said this before, toys are <laughs> usually pretty ugly until they're actually adorable. They're just one of these strange little projects that doesn't don't look good until right at the very end. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Let me see. Now, so in my mind, in my <laughs> my vision, was that I would have this big kind of flat horse muzzle face. You know, this is kind of a horse profile, right? Sort of. And then just this little round body down here. Um, and then we'll we'll put our we'll put our unicorn horn right here. So this is the concept. I think I'm close to what I want it to be. Um, let me see how it feels squishy wise. Mm -hmm. And the thing about knitting toys is if they don't quite shape the way you want to, there are little sewing tricks that can get them to shape the way that you want that won't sh show. So like I could, if I wanted to get this pulled in more so that I had a more, a tighter uh, basically neck between the neck and the body. I like the idea of it being wide. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. So I don't know. I, I always kind of do this extra. It's a tactile thing, right? You want the toy to feel good. See that? I can feel that. 
the glass there and I want to put just a little bit of um, fluff to soften that up. I don't block my toys before I stuff them. I don't know if people do, but I sure don't. I just uh, make them, <laughs> stuff them and give them away. So here we go. We've got a lucky penny at the bottom and we've got our heavy rocks in here, our heavy glass. We've got the beginning of a unicorn face and now we'll move on to feet. Okay, so unicorn feet. Here we go. So I've knit um, three of them. And I'm going to show this now, even though we're actually going to do the knitting next on the horn, but we're I'm going to start with the feet. So I was, again, on, on the road. I was at an event, a signing event, and I uh, brought knitting. And I thought, well, I'll just whip up some feet, <laughs> taking kind of a wild guess at the size of them and how big around I needed them to be. But uh, I think I got pretty close to what I'm actually looking for. These will be the little top feet. I'll probably put them up high for our little unicorn here. And um, I've soft stuffed them with uh, batting. So they are not, um, or fiber fill, whatever you want to call it, they are not hard at all. And these will be the top feet. And then I'm making the bottom foot. I only have one made. I'll make the second one. This one is, um, I'll move you out a little bit. This one is wider than the top. You can tell that, well, maybe you can't. They're slightly different. This one is a little bit flatter and rounder and this one is a little bit thinner I think it's thinner by like four stitches so it's really not by that much but this will be a top foot and again I'm not trying to overstuff it I want it to be kind of lean I might even take some more of that stuffing out and make it even thinner but this guy how I'm going to make this foot I'll show you the inside here um of course I'll have batting in there but I'm also putting a large button whoops a large button against the foot this is going to be a hoof like feeling and I'm going to go ahead and sew into these um, buttonholes to keep it in place at the end of this hoof. Uh, I don't know if anybody else does this in with knitting and with toys. I just thought I want it to feel more like a hoof and to stay kind of flat and round. And so I thought, you know what, it would be really easy just to sew a button in there. And that gives it that tactile feeling of, oh, it's like a you know hard little hoof there, whereas the top ones will be squishy. So um, and also since this one is a little wider, it kind of makes it look more like a hoof. I don't know. It doesn't look at all like honestly. <laughs> if you know horses, we are nowhere near hoof land here. And I haven't decided if I want to put batting at the bottom and then put the button in and then put the, you know, sew down so it would be solid with a little bit of softness around the edge and then get the rest of the batting in, which I, I'm kind of leaning toward this right now, having never done this and just making it up as I go. Who knows? But here we go. And then I would sew down in here. And that actually feels pretty great because that gives a little squish, but still that hard, hard shape. We're not going to get this kind of a bullet shape or whatever else you want to call that. Get your mind out of the gutter, people. But we'll get this flat shape. See that? More like a little can. Mm -hmm. So our unicorn will have these little flat foot like that and a little arm and the other little arm. And we're getting toward a little unicorn, right? getting toward a little toy and I can put the feet up or in or out I'll put this guy in or out we'll have to decide what looks the cutest part of piecing together toys is um, you go with your own aesthetic of what you like in toys and what you think is um, cute and I go for as cute as I can possibly get them because like I said they always start off looking a little ungainly when when they're being pulled together. But once they're done, they I think they turn out really fun. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, decrease the top of our unicorn here uh, so that our horn doesn't start quite so large. I want it to start a little bit smaller. And um, I'm tempted to add a few stitches back here so that the horn, I don't know if we're gonna get a horn. You know what, I'm going to do it this way because I said earlier in the video, one of the things you can do with toys is there's some sewing that you can do to kind of make the toy do what you want um, as far as shaping. Like there's shaping, this would be difficult to actually do with just like sewing something and then you get this kind of shape. So knitting, there are some things that you definitely have to do the shaping on a toy. But there's lots of little uh, shortcuts for doing other things. And I think I can make the horn stand where I want it to. Um, by using some of my sewing technique shortcuts. So what I'm going to do right now is um, 
with our unicorn all stuffed and everything. I'm going to go ahead and knit one. Where's my decrease row? So here's my, you can tell this is sort of my decrease row. And I think I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna decrease over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit. Now this is where knitting gets a little weird with twice because it's heavy at this point and it's stuffed. So it's not um, something that I can easily like have an empty folded thing to uh, knit around. But I'm just gonna pop around here and um, Trying to decide where I want my decrease. I'm going to put my decrease right here. Oops, I'm sorry for jiggling the camera there. Let's get that in there. Hope I'm working in the camera enough for you to see. Um, I'm new to YouTube. I am new to filming uh, knitting, so I appreciate your patience. Now I'm going to go straight across. Decrease on this. Okay, I have decided. <laughs> it took me a little while. It was just um, holding on to the toy and deciding how many stitches I want the horn to be. But because I want it to be pretty tall and I'm going to have to go decrease up in my spiral, I think I'm going to um, go for this. I'm going to let it be this long. Now we get to look at horn colors. Um, let's see what we've got. I have a couple of different yarns. This is the yarn that I want to use for the horn color. Let me see if I can bring it over here. Because it has these super adorable sparkly sequins in it. It is, um, let's see what we're working with here. It is uh, Classic Shades Sequins Light uh, by Universal Yarn. It's acrylic wool and paillette. Payette? I actually don't know what payette is. Yes, it's made in North Carolina. Anyways, Universal Yarn, thank you for having some sparkly stuff for fantasy type uh, unicorns. We're going to get going on this. I bought this a little while ago out at a local yarn store, who I will give a shout out to now. It's uh, Apples to Oranges out in um, Silverton, Oregon. Lovely little shop. They have tea there and uh, knitting groups and so many wonderful kinds of yarn. I just really enjoy going out there. So here's our here's our yarn and it's good. The color isn't really showing up too well on camera, but um, let's see. So the top, this is pink. This is a, a soft light pink and this is gray, which again, I think it's kind of hard to tell, but maybe up close you can see. This is gray, whereas this is pink. Again, my lighting is not great on this. Okay. So uh, next thing I'm going to do is get this uh, horn started. I'm deciding if I want to also add in this gray that I, this silver that I have. Um, I have this kind of silver, which is also very pretty and also has some sparkles on it, but it's just, I think it's too thick to work for my horn. See how thick that yarn is compared to that? Yeah, that's way too much yarn. So we're not going to use that, I don't think, although it's kind of a backup plan. But the next one that I think I could use, well, one, I could use this. This is some fantastic uh, sparkle. It is very, very thin and it has sequins in it, which, you know, the horn has to be the super magic part. So I'm, you know, part of me thinks maybe I should do the um, pink sparkle and the gray sparkle together. Let's see what that would look like. 
It might be kind of pretty. It's kind of hard to see. That might be pretty as a horn. And it's still, um, yeah, might be good. I might try that. The other thing that I might add is this, which is also sparkly. Um, this is what the hooves are made out of. I carried this with a white yarn to do the little hooves that they had sparkle, sparkle. And you know what? I could even do all three. I could do the pink and the, I mean, it would be a little thicker thread, but all three of these are pretty thin. And that might give us enough shine and sparkle for the uh, unicorn horn to be magical. because we've got to get the magic on. So let's get going on the horn. And Okay, I'm going to um, do one of these feet here. This is the bottom foot that I want to be more hoof-like, so it's a little bit bigger than the top foot. We're going to, um, I decided that what I want to do is put a button in it to make it feel more like a hoof on this part. So I'm just gonna take a look at the inside, make sure I tied it off in a knot. I did, I like to knot my yarns and my toys. And then I'm gonna put a tiny bit of fluff this is a uh, polyfill, I guess is what it's called, uh, right there at the bottom, just to give a little softness so that it's not, you know, too hard when you touch it. And then here's our hoof. And I don't know if it matters which way the hoof goes, but since this is actually, I mean, none of this is an actual horse's hoof, but we're going to just put it, the button right in there. And what I'm aiming for is this nice kind of flat, I mean, it'll have a little bit of a puff, but this nice hard edge around the edge here. That's what I'm what I'm hoping to get out of this button idea. So again, this button idea comes down to doing a little sewing. I have uh, have a length of yarn and the sequins, while they're fabulous as far as um, sparkle, 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 see that? <laughs> they are a real pain to sew with. They're fine to knit with, but sewing, you know, trying to pull the sequin yarn through with the other yarn, which happens to be wool, which means it's very catchy. That was <laughs> challenging and sort of ridiculous. So here we go. One of the things to think about when you're sewing on toys is that you have, all sewing has a beginning tail of yarn and an ending tail of yarn, right? So here's my, here's my tail of yarn, um, the silver here that I'm working with in my needle. And we wanna hide that inside the toy. We don't wanna knot it on the outside of the toy hanging out. So I'm gonna start this um, sewing with the button on the inside, which is also great because I can actually see the buttonhole. Hang on, let me show you. Can you see that on the camera? See the button hidden down there? Yep, that's what we're going to use. Um, I'm going to just one more time make sure that I have it mostly centered on this um, gray, well, the silvery hoof part here. Okay, that feels like if we were to pull that all tight, uh, it's relatively centered. I'm pretty comfortable with that. It's a toy. It's going to move. It's going to smoosh around, but oops, I just smushed it too much. I want to hold it with my thumb, give it a little tension, make sure that I've got it where I want it to be, not too far over because, oops, come on button, line up here. This is a little slipperier than one would expect. That feels relatively good. So I'm trying to keep it <clears throat> held there with my finger and then I'm going right into one of those buttonholes. So one of the great things about um, knitting toys is that they're pretty forgiving on the outside where your stitches go. There's enough variation in the yarn, there's enough variation in the stitches that um, if I do a big stitch on the outside it's likely it won't really be seen in the knit pattern. Let me um, see how this goes. I'm doing a big cross 
knit here because I'm going, um, what's it called? Diagonal, you know, kitty corner, cat, cat, catty corner. There's so many different ways to say that. See, see that? I'm going from this hole to that hole in the button. And what I'm going to do is pull it tight. You notice I've kept a long um, tail here on the yarn that's inside the toy. And that's because I'm going to tie this sucker in a knot and hold it down real tight. So let's take a look and see how that looks on the toy. Yeah, you don't really see that that stitch particularly. Like, can you pick it out from all the other stitches? Not really. I mean, it blends in well enough that it's not going to take away from the toy's aesthetic at all. And I think it looks just fine. So at this point, I'm going to tie this to lock it in and to make our little hoof work here. Um, double knot, nothing fancy, but tight. You know, I want it to hold pretty tight. I want it to hold the stuffing that I put on top of the button down. So I'm going to do my best to tight tie this. We'll see if that works out okay. Um, it's a little bit of finger gymnastics here. Okay, let's see how we did. Oh yeah, see, I like that. That was my hope, is that I could get this kind of smashed down. See how it has that little nice little curved kind of hoof bit going there? See, come on, look at that. Now that looks, ooh, it makes me want to do it on the other hooves too, on the top hooves. Hmm, I'll have to think about that. Okay, so uh, one stitch is not going to do, it won't hold us. So we're gonna, I'm going to work button side here and we're going to go up again and I can kind of aim where I want it to be on the here. Like I could come up way out here in the, in the toy. Can you see that way out there? But I don't want to, I want to come in toward the center. Um, so this is really toward the center more. See, there's my needle. So I could come in like way out here if I wanted, but I'm going to come in right by the center and up it goes. And just like a real button, you know, you're always told, one stitch isn't enough. You want to get in a couple stitches to hold it down. Again, I'm looking, am I toward the center of my toy? I am. I don't want my needle to come in like all the way over here to tie into the button. I want it to be right toward the center, which it is because here it is. I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but here we go. So now we've done almost one full crisscross and um, whoops, <laughs> catching that. We don't want that to happen. Okay. So we're going to go uh, here. You will also notice, again, center of the toy, I am not um, doing anything with this tail yet because it's going to be my final tie off. And I'm going to do a few more crisscrosses just the same way. I mean, I guess I could go square too. It's just, I don't know, as a kid, like <laughs> all my sandwiches, I like them cut corner to corner. I like to sew buttons in X's and, um, <laughs> I guess I'm still that way. So you could do it this way if you want to. I don't know that there's any strength difference between doing it one way or another. You just want to make sure that you get the needle in here enough times. Okay, so I'm going to finish this off and uh, show you how it all works out. Alrighty, we are uh, done with the little hoof. I'm going to show you the inside here. I went ahead and tied off the last stitch through with the tail yarn. Just have a nice little knot there that's holding the button good and strong and it's keeping the fluff here on the outside connected to the button so that it stays padded and then uh, we're going to put a little fiber fill in there. Great thing about fiber fill is it's part of how you can shape your toy. If I wanted to put more in, say, say if I decided to really stuff it really big, I could get a much bigger, chunkier, stiffer foot. Uh, and you can even stretch your fabric over it so I could get a longer leg if I wanted. But I'm hoping for this toy to have a short, stubby, <laughs> nubby little leg. So I'm not going to overfill it at this point. And of course we have the um, tail from when I cast on um, no, from when I cast off, sorry. <laughs> from when I cast off the stitches of making the leg. So here it is. It, I think we've got a good leg so far. Here's our, whoops, here's our unicorn. Here's where the leg would go, somewhere over here maybe. Give you a side view or maybe like here, give you an idea. This is his nose. His eyes are going to go, her eyes. This is actually a girl unicorn. The the horn that I might, I might mess around with, but this definitely the 
hoof is on the right track here. We want that. And um, like I said, I might modify the horn to make it look more like it's appearing on the head instead of a princess hat kind of horn that's like, woof, one smooth princess hat shape. We'll see. We'll see what I do with this. But right now I'm going to make another one of these because I have two of the little hands. And I do think, I think I like the idea of having the bottom hoof be more like a flat and this one be more like a bullet shape just to kind of differentiate front front hands and front feet we'll see we'll see how i do it um but we're definitely making progress